It's an exciting day in the shop as I am getting a brand new machining tool. I have purchased a Precision Matthews PM728. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. Now some of you may be a little confused because you probably found my channel due to my DIY mill build where I took the mill head off of my mill lathe combo and converted it into a standalone mill and then subsequently modified that to make it an adjustable column standalone mill. That mill works great. It's not perfect, but it does function very well. The problem that I have with it is bed travel. I really only have about six to eight inches of usable travel by the time you get a piece clamped to the top and that sort of thing. Because of that, it was time to upgrade to something a little bigger and a little better. Don't worry, that DIY build is not gonna go to waste. I'm gonna take the mill head off of that, probably put it back on the lathe, converting it back into a combo machine. But the stand and cross slide table that are currently that machine, are going to become a DIY surface grinder. Stay tuned for that build. A couple things to note when I was preparing to take delivery for this, I set out some 4x4 blocks. The reason for that is that gives me options. I don't have a pallet jack, I don't have a way to easily move this around, that kind of thing. And by setting the pallet on 4x4 blocks, I now have options. I now have the ability to get the jack underneath the pallet and raise it. When I took delivery of it, I inspected the crate before I signed for it, and clearly this pallet had been dropped somewhere along the line. The bottom of the mill had fallen through the top pallet. Thankfully, there was two pallets, so everything was contained. And near as I can tell, other than a little bit of paint damage, there wasn't any damage to the machine. I noted this to the driver, he took pictures and noted it in his log in case there was a problem, and then I went ahead and signed for it. As I was unpacking it, I took tons of pictures showing the damage where it had fallen through, and I sent those pictures to Precision Matthews, and they were like, no problem, once you get around to using the machine, if you know anything appears to be damaged, let us know, we'll get you taken care of. So, my experience thus far with Precision Matthews customer service has been outstanding. So here's a tip for you. After you cut those straps off, don't throw them away. Not just because any material you can hang on to in the shop, you might find a use for in the future, but because there is a specific thing you can do with that strapping in the shop. And that's this right here. Now, that probably just looks like some sort of art, something, I don't know, what did he make there? Well, it's really pretty simple. When you go to put something in the mill vise and you're using parallels, sometimes as you're adjusting things, those parallels will wander. But if you take and bend this like this, bend the ends so we don't have a sharp edge that's gonna damage your vise, and now you can fit that in between the parallels. As you tighten it down, it's gonna be springy, it's gonna flex and these parallels are gonna be locked into place. You can make these in multiple sizes to adjust for different widths that you may be using them as. It's just a really simple, free trick that is fantastic for a mill vise. Unpacking, it was pretty simple. There was lots of boxes sitting on the cross slide table and Lots of parts and pieces, stuff for the DRO, all those kind of things. And I carefully unpacked everything, inspected everything, set it off to the side. Then I ended up with the actual machine there by itself. I used a lever to lift up on the machine and put some two befores and some three quarter inch material underneath the machine in the back corner where it had fallen apart. As you can see, I've done multiple boards underneath two befores as well as this extra board to get everything all leveled up. I wanted to do that to get everything balanced and sitting properly before picking it up with the cherry picker. 
I also wanted to do that because as you are cranking the cranks and as I was going through and moving everything to make sure it was all working properly after the shipping damage, I wanted to make sure that everything was relatively level before starting that process. So here it is. We are about ready to lift it up and get it in its new home on the bench. And before we can break it in, do any of those kind of things, the manual says that we need to remove the drawbar. I'm assuming they are saying that because they don't want it flopping around. Right now it's easily accessible, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and I'm gonna show you how I did that. So let's follow the directions. We will remove the drawbar. It's pretty simple to do. You take the spindle wrench that was supplied with the unit and a wrench that fits on top of the spindle cap. Loosen that up once it's loose. You can just unscrew the cap and lift out the drawbar. From there, the cap just needs to be reinstalled so that everything is protected and so that we know where it is. Prior to moving it, you wanna adjust your center of gravity to be as low as possible and to be as balanced as possible. And there's a couple things you can do to do that. First of all, you want the quill fully up. Second, you wanna crank the head down to be very close to the bed of the mill. I can tell already that I'm gonna be adding a power feed option to this crank for the height of the mill. I have that on my DIY mill and it is so nice. All right, I would say that's close enough. The last thing is you wanna make sure that the table is nice and centered. Again, that is for balance purposes. It's really important that nothing gets pinched when you end up strapping this and getting ready to move. And so the easiest thing for me to do was to take the coils of the cable and put them on the DRO display mounting bracket. I then zip tied it in place so that I don't have to worry about anything coming loose when I'm moving it. I am still gonna have to be careful and I may actually grab another zip tie and get this bottom section zip tied up so that the cable cannot slip underneath the casting and get stuck when we're setting it in place or if we have to set it down in the middle of using it. So this is my welding table. It's got a nice fan hood on it and the bench vise there on the left hand side and I pretty much never use this as a welding table. When I first set this up in here I didn't have room for it in the garage and I figured that the shop being all fabrication that having the welder in here would be fantastic. The problem is by the time you deal with venting and the dirt and grime that are inevitable with welding it just doesn't make a lot of sense to have the welder in here. As you can see, it's home to the bandsaw. What I'm going to do with this is we're going to detach this and I'm going to put wheels on the bottom so that it can go with the welding cart in the garage. That way I have this as a dedicated table that I can use for welding. We're going to relocate the bandsaw. We're going to remove the fan hood and this is just enough space for my new mill. It's going to sit at about the same height as this other workbench, be a little taller than that workbench. I'm fairly tall, so I like to have the machines fairly high. All I got to do is move this table out of here, move out all the junk that is under the table and to the side of the table, build a new workbench, and then we will be set to move that mill into the shop and start making chips. I find it extremely apropos that the top for this workbench is a treadmill track. If you've seen a lot of my other videos, you know that I've kind of made a name for myself as the treadmill conversion guy. And part of that has been scrapping treadmills. There is so much good stuff on a treadmill, including the treadmill track. It's heavy duty, super dense board. It has a really durable finish on it. And it just makes for a super strong decking material. The next step is we need to get this ready to mount to the bench and we need to pre-drill the holes before we move the mill. To do that, 
I'm going to use the chip tray. I'm not a big fan of chip trays, so I'm not actually going to be using this on this actual tool, but I will use these holes as a template to know exactly where I need to drill my holes. I've done a ton of measurements. I know exactly where I want this to be sitting. I wanted to make sure that I had a little more room on this end because of the power feed that I'm going to be installing. But I also wanted to make sure that if I fully extended it this way, that I wasn't bumping into anything and was having an issue with my hand wheels going way far over onto this bench. The perfect measurement to get that balance and to have it be well supported is 17 inches from the edge. So if I measure that out, that positions me this way, this way to the bench. And then the next thing is making sure that the hand wheel is out over the edge of the bench without sticking out too far. What's really nice is Precision Matthews already planned for that. All you have to do is line up the edge of the chip tray with the edge of your bench and you're going to have the perfect distance passed. Makes sense. They don't want you hitting your hand on the chip tray. And so it's a very similar distance so that you're just past so that you can get your hands underneath the wheel. We'll take and line that edge up, mark some holes. My holes clearly marked. We're going to remove the chip tray. It's done its job. We're going to center punch. And then we're going to go ahead and drill out these holes. And just like that, we have this surface prepped, and it's just a matter of getting the mill lifted up, set down on a cart, wheeled in here, and then lifted off the cart and set into place. So I just wanted to note, make sure that you strap it in the correct location. There are very specific instructions where to put the strap so as not to damage it. The most important thing is that you're avoiding cables and hoses and that kind of thing, just like this oiling hose right here. Had we run it closer, we could have potentially damaged that. It has landed. I'm happy with how it's sitting and man, does it look good. So off camera, we got it positioned where I wanted it. We got it bolted down, installed the DRO. All that's left is to do the break in. Now, just a reminder, we removed the drawbar before we moved it. It is important that the drawbar is removed for break in because you don't want it rattling around with nothing in the spindle. To break it in, we power it on. You have your forward and reverse. We turn it to forward and we begin to bring up the speed. The directions say to run it at between 300 and 400 RPMs for the first minute. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Once it's run for a full minute at 400, then you take it up incrementally let it run for a little bit in between until we reach max RPM. Now the directions don't say how incrementally, it just says to take it up incrementally. So we're gonna go a couple hundred RPM, let it run for a bit, and then we'll speed it up again. Now, according to the manual, max speed on the lower pulley setting is supposed to be 1600, but it looks to me like we're getting 1744. At some point, I will use my optic RPM meter and double check the spindle to make sure that is all accurate. Everything seems to be functioning extremely well. Let's check the rest of the buttons. Emergency stop works. Let's go ahead and turn that off. 
I'm going to turn it down a bit. I'm going to pull out the emergency stop. Power it back on. Let's see how it does in reverse. Everything looks good. Everything seems to be functioning as it's supposed to. You're going to see this machine in future videos as I'm making stuff. I'm also going to do a review of the DRO that I purchased with this, as well as a couple other videos specifically to this machine. But other than that, it's mostly going to be me making stuff with this mill. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and I'll try and get an answer to you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.